Hello everyone, my name is Igor Guerrero, and today I will assist you in completing RPQ 5.6.7, restarting a surface search radar. So let's get started. In order to complete this prac, read all the steps of the RPQ to ensure correct completion of corrective maintenance. The first step in completing this prac is a technician needs permission to start corrective maintenance. You can get permission from the ESD maintenance supervisor as well as the EOW or OOD of a particular asset. The next step of completing this prac is gathering all pertinent information such as schematics. Using the reference tab of the RPQ, we will use Technical Publication 2, which is the SPS 50 Service Manual. A digital copy of this manual could be found on CG Portal in the ET Rating Force Master Chief's Reference Library. For today's corrective maintenance, we will need a flathead screwdriver and a multimeter. Keep in mind that in the fleet you might encounter different faults which would require additional test equipment. Keep in mind that when performing corrective maintenance, it is important to follow the unit's local lockout and tagout procedures. The first step to troubleshooting is symptom recognition. I don't see video on my display. The second step to troubleshooting is symptom elaboration. In our simulated environment, I can see that the antenna is not spinning. The third step to troubleshooting is listing probable causes. Up here I have a signal flow diagram on how DC voltages travel throughout the system. The first source of voltage is our AC power card located in the lower unit. Then it goes to a lower terminal board from there it goes to the upper terminal board and finally reaching your motor. You have to check every single input and output as well as a connection to determine which piece of equipment is at fault. The fourth step to troubleshooting is localizing the faulty function. This step will be performed using a multimeter and seeing if we're getting our correct voltages. I will now take a voltage reading coming out of the AC power card assembly. I can see that my AC power card is outputting the correct DC voltage. We verified that the AC power card is providing the correct voltages. Now we will check the lower terminal board to see if that assembly is providing good voltages going up to the pedestal. I can see that the lower terminal board is outputting the correct DC voltage. From now, we will go to the upper terminal board to isolate the faulty function. Now that we check the lower terminal board and its output, we will check the output of the upper terminal board which is connected to the motor. I can see that the upper terminal board is providing the correct DC voltages. Our final step in troubleshooting the system is verifying that the motor is getting the correct DC voltages. We can see that the motor is receiving the correct DC voltages. Now that we have checked all the voltages leading up to the motor, it comes down to two possible faults. The motor brushes or the motor. Since brushes are very easy to check, we'll start there first. Step 5 is localizing the trouble through the circuit. Let's see if our possibilities from step 4 are present within the circuit. Upon an inspection, I can see that the motor brush is damaged. The final step is failure analysis. Judging from this damaged motor brush, I can say it exceeded its life expectancy. The next step would be to replace this motor brush with a new one. I've obtained and installed the part. I've cleared any tags associated with the system. It is time to verify functionality of the radar. I have video on my screen as well as antenna rotation. The next step will be to document corrective action. I'm ET1 Guerrero. Thanks for your time.